Cornette. I just wonder if any of you are sick and tired as I am of people who claim to be the icon of wrestling. I grew up watching professional wrestling, but I lost interest a while ago in big beefy men and tidy whiteies rubbing all over each other. Once in a while I'll watch it, but most of the time I'm not invested enough to care. So maybe consider me a casual fan of big beefy men and tidy whiteies rubbing all over each other. And I know, there are women wrestlers and for the sake of equality, awesomely beefed up women in their underwear rubbing all over one another. God, I just realized taken out of context, this sounds like I'm talking about a genre on Pornhub. Anyways, wrestling has had some controversies. Chris Benoit, concussions, steroids, the Ring Boy scandal, which I will cover later. But those are none of those. This is the Speaking Out movement, which is basically the Me Too movement for wrestling. And there were a lot of companies that this affected. The Indies, AEW, WWE, ROH, Impact Wrestling, the British wrestling scene, New Japan Pro Wrestling, pretty much everyone. So I'm going to go through, in this video, most of the list of the accused, what they're accused of, and what happened to them afterwards. This will be in order of the company or place that they worked at the time they were accused. So let's get started. Before we begin, let's look at some of the ones from the past that should be mentioned. The Fabulous Moolah was a professional wrestler active from 1949 to roughly 2007. I am counting the matches she had in the 90s and 2000s because she had them, therefore she was active. She ran a wrestling school as well, training women in the art of wrestling, and was accused by Wendy Richter and Mad Maxine of being a greedy woman who would book her trainees and then her trainees would not see a dime of those bookings. All that money would go to Moolah. Kind of a fitting name if you think about it. There were also accusations that she would be sending these women out like a pimp would send out a lady of the night. Penny Baker, the family of Sweet Georgia Brown, and Luna Vachon all claimed that Moolah, real name Mary Ellison, would routinely send women to promotions and have them sleep with the members of that promotion's roster or the promoter. Sandy Parker claimed that Moolah told her to stop going to gay bars and to date men, which Parker was gay if you didn't pick up on that. Moolah died in 2007 at the age of 84. The WWE wanted to honor her by naming a battle royal hosted at WrestleMania after her, and the backlash from Twitter was enough that they changed their mind. And the battle royal was just called the Women's Battle Royal, which pretty sure they haven't had that battle royal in a couple of years, but I could be wrong. Ric Flair is probably going to be the one on this part of the list that most people recognize. He has kind of transcended the business itself and has been considered an icon now. He has been in rap videos, commercials, and I'm pretty sure he still lives the gimmick he created for himself. Styling and profiling, the limousine riding, the jet flying, son of a gun and sometimes he calls himself Space Mountain. You get the idea. Anyways, he has had controversies, including calling Teddy Long the N-word, which was according to Teddy Long. Probably was jealous of Teddy. Teddy Long is a whole lot more entertaining than Ric Flair ever will be. And then you have the accusations from Heidi Doyle. She was a flight attendant. The flight is referred to as the plane ride from hell for how out of control it got. It was a chartered flight from the UK to the US with an open bar and a bunch of people who were bored. Well, Ric Flair decided to walk around in nothing but one of his robes, which was open, he was naked as a jaybird underneath it, and did something called the helicopter. I'll let your imaginations figure out what the helicopter is. And well, he also decided to walk up to Miss Doyle and asked her to touch him in his no-no place, and then forced her to, allegedly. Ric Flair denies this happened, but a lot of wrestlers have stated that he was drunk at the time, and he did definitely do the helicopter. So Grizzly Smith is not a well-known name outside of the hardcore wrestling fans, but he was the father of Jake the Snake Roberts. And well, this will be short because this is a confirmed to be true. Smith was dating Jake's grandmother before his mother. And well, Smith took advantage of Jake's mother, who was 13 at the time. And well, Jake was born from it, and Jake's grandmother forced Smith to marry the 13-year-old. Yeah, he wasn't a very good person. 
All three of those stories were covered on The Dark Side of the Ring, which was a documentary show that was on Vice TV. I know, I know, we should totally get to the speaking out movement already, but I need to touch on some things beforehand. I will one day cover the Me Too movement, as it is important. It did put away Harvey Weinstein and cause others who abused women and men to be blacklisted or exposed them. But some people didn't realize that this didn't start in 2017. It started in 2006. Tarana Burke started using the phrase Me Too on MySpace as a way to encourage women to come forwards with their own stories of abuse. She had been accosted once and she knew what survivors were going through. So she wanted to empower women through empathy. In 2015, an Italian model named Ambra Gutierrez spoke out against Harvey Weinstein, which is really the beginning of Me Too. Though a lot of people consider Rose McGowan and Alyssa Milano coming forward with accusations in 2017 the kickoff to the Me Too movement. To me, 2015 is when it started. Now, while I do believe victims and listen to victims, I am also one of those people who look into things more deeply because I know that a person could lie about what they went through. I have seen it happen where a person gets falsely accused of something only for their reputation to be tarnished, but it later comes out that the accusations were lies. Does it happen often? No. But does it happen? Yes. But I do believe victims, so don't get me wrong on that. I just believe that if there is more to the story or something doesn't make sense within the story, it needs to be clarified. Emily Linden wrote this in the height of the Me Too movement. Sorry, if some innocent men's reputation have to take a hit in the process of undoing the patriarchy, that is a price I am willing to pay. To that, I say no. If a person is innocent, it doesn't matter the gender of that person. They are a victim. If someone's reputation is damaged because of false accusations, then that is a victim. Lyndon was working at Teen Vogue at the time she wrote that. And the fact that she believed it then, not sure if she still does, makes her no better than those who take advantage of others. You can disagree and tell me that this is apples to oranges, but I'm standing by that statement. Anyways, let's get to the speaking out movement finally. While there's a lot of things similar about the Me Too movement and speaking out, there are some key differences in my opinion. The Me Too movement felt very much planned. It seemed every day someone had something to say about certain celebrities and it always felt like it was some weird messed up schedule. I could be totally wrong about that, but that's how I felt about it. Speaking out movement just kind of came organically. On June 17, 2020, David Starr was accused by a woman named Victoria on Twitter. We will get to that accusation later, but it jump started this whole damn thing and it just snowballed downhill. I remember people covering it would have to update their reporting every second. Soon the hashtag speaking out was used and it trended for days. So I compiled the list, like I said. But first, let's really fastly get David Starr out of the way. David Starr was a wrestler. All I can say about him is that I've never seen his act. He was working in the indie scene though, and he was working for Defiant Wrestling in the UK, as well as Progress Wrestling and WSXW in the States. And his ex under the Twitter handle Slay Mysterio decided to out him. In a long Twitter thread, she accused him of rape, gaslighting, emotional abuse, SA as all the channels who are trying to be clean call it, and considered him evil. Ironically, she stated in these tweets that she didn't want to bring down his career, but she kinda did. He did make a statement denying all the allegations, but stated that he was a horrible partner and did cheat. Anyways, he was stripped of all championships he was holding at the time, and he was blacklisted. He abandoned all his social media and was pretty much retired from pro wrestling. So, let's start with UK wrestling and then go down the list. Mikey Whiplash was accused of sexual harassment and physical abuse. Don't know shit about him, but he worked for an all-female wrestling company called Fierce Females, which he was fired from. Soraya Knight. Most people outside of the UK don't know who Soraya Knight is, but they do know her daughter, especially if you're a fan of the WWE or a fan of Falling in Reverse. Soraya Knight's daughter is Paige, also known as Ronnie Radke's girlfriend. Soraya was still wrestling well into her 40s when allegations of abuse of trainees caused her to retire. Will Ospreay and Scott Wainwright. This is a double one, 
because Will Ospreay was accused of blacklisting the victim of Scott Wainwright. A female wrestler named Pollyanna made claims against Wainwright, then claimed Will Ospreay covered it all up and caused her to be blacklisted from places Will had pull in. Ospreay denied, of course. Too bad International Wrestling League made a statement suggesting it was true. And then in October of 2020, recanted the statement. Yeah, that sounds fishy. Anyways, let's look at All Elite Wrestling. Sammy Guevara. If you're a fan of Sammy, it's probably a shock to see him on here. But here's the thing. He didn't get accused of anything. Instead, an old clip from 2016 resurfaced where he said something so fucking stupid, I wonder how he thought it was funny. He was on a show called The Whole Effin' Show, which is a wrestling show with the most annoying host ever. Dude tries to be a 90s shock jock. It's just pathetic. Anyways, Sammy was on there, and for some reason, he decided to let people know that he wanted to, um, rape Sasha Banks. And he thought that was a joke. Yeah, he was booted off television, but he owned up to it, apologized, called Sasha Banks, and they had a long, productive discussion. And then he was forced to go into sensitivity training. Since then, he has been pretty tame. TNT champion three times. Worst thing he said since is how he and his girlfriend, Tay Conti, um, did things on the title. Jimmy Havoc. I would not consider Jimmy Havoc a wrestler. For one, he is a hardcore wrestler, which means no athletic skills, just hitting people with objects. His favorite thing to do was to staple shit to people's heads. So yeah, this will be short. His ex-girlfriend, Rebecca Crow, accused him of emotional and verbal abuse, which coincided with him assaulting a fan and domestic abuse allegations. He was sent to counseling and rehabilitation, which to me suggests he did do all those things and was asked to. He was let go by AEW and pretty much has fallen off the map. There's an image of him in a courier's uniform, though, so he might have just decided to work a normal job. Darby Allen. Darby Allen was accused of some things by Holly Cromwell, a woman who claimed to have been in a relationship with him. She claimed SA, emotional abuse, and mental abuse. Nothing came out of it. He's still on television. Not sure if anything was even investigated, but he's still on television and he is a huge fan favorite. That was all for AEW, so now let's move to ROH. Marty Skrull. Going to say this now, I like the villain character. Marty played this cool guy in an overcoat, top hat, plague doctor's mask, and umbrella. And he was massively popular. And he was accused of taking advantage of a 16 year old who was drunk, which he didn't deny happened. He claimed that they were both drunk. Oh, and this happened in the UK where the legal age of consent is 16. So it wasn't the the fact that someone was underage. According to the UK law, they are consenting adults. The issue was that she was drunk at the time, and he said it happened, but both were drunk. He left ROH on his own accord and hadn't done anything until recently. He is trying to kickstart his career again. Jay Lethal. This isn't the first time Jay Lethal has been alleged to have harassed a female wrestler. He was accused of it by Taylor Hendricks in 2018. And in 2020, Kelly Klein accused him of the same thing, which also Klein suggests was covered up by ROH. Jay Lethal denies this stuff. He is still working with ROH and AEW. So now let's move on to the big fish, the World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. Joe Coffey. Joe Coffey was signed to NXT UK. He was accused of sending naked photos of himself and stalking. He was suspended, but came back to the WWE in October. Jack Gallagher wrestled under the nickname The Gentleman, and he was accused of SA and was immediately fired. There was no waiting period. If there was an investigations into the claim, it was swift. He has not worked since 2020 in the wrestling business. Velveteen Dream was a Prince-inspired gimmick, who had been in the past accused of sending inappropriate texts to underage girls. Nothing came of this then, but he got brought back up with accusations of grooming added on. Apparently, in investigating the claims against him, WWE found nothing, but they kept him off television for a while, brought him back, and then he disappeared again. And then he was quietly released in May of 2021. Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle's accusations are just weirdly out there. Riddle was accused by a mistress of sexual misconduct, including forcing her to give him a mouth hug in the back of a car. Riddle was married at the time and admitted to having an affair with his accuser, but claimed that what she said happened didn't happen. When he was signed in 2018, WWE investigated these same claims and found that they were lies. So the accuser took him to court over it and then dropped the lawsuit in 2021. At the time of this video, 
Riddle is a tag team champion with Randy Orton in the tag team called RK Bro. He's also divorced. And with a post on Instagram that's now deleted, his ex-wife claims that he hasn't seen his children much in the past couple of months. Another guy who was released right after he was named was Ligero. He was accused by multiple people of indecent assault, being all around inappropriate, and sending some nudes. He has admitted to everything but the indecent assault. Travis Banks. Millie McKenzie accused Travis Banks of emotional abuse. She was 17 and a trainee of his, and according to her, Banks took advantage of her, and they were in a relationship. Banks denied all of this, but McKenzie had proof in the form of screenshots. She ended up proving that he did all those things, but also stalked her. He was fired by WWE. Jordan Devlin was accused of abuse by a former girlfriend. He denied the allegations, but was suspended for a bit. He is still with the WWE, a former Cruiserweight champion, and works mostly with NXT UK. With all those out of the way, I'm going to combine the independent independent promotions and Impact Wrestling together since Impact wrestlers tend to do both. If pro wrestling had a person who represented herpes symbolically, it would be Joey Ryan. The dude's whole gimmick was pretty much centered around a porn star look and his junk. God damn it, I have to talk about dongs again. Yeah, just to show you the dumb shit this guy did, this is called the You Porn Plex. Yep, that's right. This guy thinks that we all should believe that he has the power to flip people with his dong. He also had a habit of pulling a lollipop out of his trunks and shoving it in opponent's mouths. And well, this. Oh my god. I was a licensed sex educator at New York University for over two- Yes, dong druids. Undertaker should sue. Anyways, is it any surprise to anyone, someone who pretty much thinks all of what I showed you is okay, was accused of some shady shit, harassment, essay, and not just one, several women reported it. He did an hour-long video where he attempted to prove his innocence through screenshots and evidence, but people who worked with him kind of threw him under the bus. He did attempt a comeback, appearing on a poster for Wrestling for Women, an event to raise money for women's charities, which the whole event was canceled because he was involved. Michael Elgin. Michael Elgin was mostly in Impact Wrestling, but was also on the independent circuit. Honestly, I've never seen his matches, but he was another with SA allegations. He was removed from Impact and contract terminated. Dave Crist was accused of SA from his ex, and like Elgin, he was fired from Impact. This had a bad impact, no pun intended, because his brother Jake and him were a tag team, and because of Dave's allegations, Jake also lost his job. Mark Adam Haggerty. Haggerty worked for Major League Wrestling. He was a ring announcer and was caught texting a minor. It took less than an hour for Haggerty to be fired. Dave Lagana. Lagana was the vice president of the NWA, not the rap group, the wrestling organization now owned by Billy Corgan. Anyways, he was accused of misconduct, so he had to resign. Mike Quackenbush was the promoter for Shikara. He was accused of turning a blind eye to obvious abuses. A lot of Shikara stars like Hollow Wicked and Kimberly left the promotion, and the promotion ceased operation. Jonathan Wolf worked for Game Changer Wrestling. He was accused of essay and mental abuse. Don't know what happened to him. Congo Kong was a big fat man who was accused of assaulting and bullying a wrestler named Kyle Boone, including forcing Boone to show his dong. Kong, in his 40s now, claims that he grew up in a time where ribbing was common. Ribbing him's pretty much hazing. Anyways, he claimed to only do shit like that to people that he liked. Either way, he hasn't really done anything since 2019, so odds are he's not going to be working anytime soon. There is one more I want to cover, and this is going to be kind of interesting. So this is the last one, and it is going to get its own segment. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Cornette. So there is one person in this whole entire story who didn't take shit from the speaking out movement. And that man's name is James E. Cornett. Really quickly, let's go over the things Jim Cornett has done before going into the allegations that were against him and his wife. 
He slapped the shit out of Santino Morella in OVW. He was fired from Impact Wrestling because he thought the person writing the stories was full of shit. He left ROH because he felt the company didn't take care of shit and cared more about what a merchandise guy thought than the wrestlers. He left the NWA after making an Ethiopian joke on commentary. He also retired from commentary. He's also been arrested in the past, and he took a baseball bat to a car on more than one occasion. He even threatened to shoot Brock Lesnar in the face. So yeah, all of those could have gotten him cancelled on Twitter, but no, it was his relationship with his wife. Back when he was the head booker and owner of OVW, his wife was a valet. Stacy is her name. Well, apparently in 2017, according to Phil Early, the two would groom trainees. If you slept with Stacy, according to Early, you would get ahead. Well, Jim Cornette looked at this as only Jim Cornette could. Cornette stated that he was helping on a non-regular basis at the time, and he wasn't a part of OVW. He also stated that taking the sex for success out of the equation, all he was being accused of was having an interesting sex life. Pretty much Cornette admits to slapping the shit out of trainees, but not SA, or forcing them to have sex with his wife. This entire response was on his podcast, Jim Cornette's drive Through. i I'm gonna play some of the audio, but it's like an hour long because Cornette Cornette loves to talk. And I know a lot of people out there right now are saying, Jim Cornette is not going to take this seriously. Fuck no, I'm not. Are you out of your fucking mind? Basically, somebody on some guy on Twitter. Was that a James Gregory line? Some guy. Some guy on Twitter alleges that Stacy and I have engaged in a concerted effort over the last some 20 years to recruit sex slaves and disciples from the OVW roster and uh, threatened, I threatened to withhold contracts or pushes and ruin their careers unless they submitted to Stacy's carnal desires. This accusation was made, furthermore, by a guy on Twitter who says that he was an aspiring wrestling trainee in 2017. So it would be three years ago. Um, <clears throat> when, when they got a phrase now, groom. When Stacy tried to groom him to somehow come under her spell, uh, and though he says he was able to escape us, we ruined a good friend of his life or career or whatever by tormenting him, and he... And this guy just couldn't go on any longer without speaking out, even though he was scared and shaking as he revealed this information. He actually typed that. I'm shaking as I type this. I have I have not physically abused anybody. Well, okay, I physically abused some men. By the strict definition of that term, I've hit a lot of men over the head with the fucking tennis racket. Let me try this again. How should I say this? I've... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be categorical here, and I can't make that blanket statement when I say anybody, because I've physically abused a lot of fucking men. But not in a sexual manner. But not in a sexual way. Okay, there's categorical. I've not physically abused any men in a sexual way, and I haven't phys physically abused any women. And here's another one of the big reveals. I, I hate to spoil everything also at one time. This person that she was pissed at, that she was talking about badly was the guy that the fellow over in Billings, that middle-aged fucking wrestling school flunk out in Billings, said is the close friend of his that confided this dark secret in him that told him how he was able to escape with his life and in this uh, horrible situation, blah, 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 right? He's the, the, he's the friend, the guy she was pissed at, shit-talking. Apparently, Billings didn't know the heat was off. And Heat's been off for a while. Because I talked to the fucking guy that she was cutting a promo on about it. And his response was, how the fuck did I get involved in this? This guy is not my friend. I have never had a conversation with him, much less confided deep, dark secrets about him, about you. I've never had a conversation with him where I mentioned yours and Stacy's name. I saw him around OVW a few years back, like a hundred other people. 
I'm going to link down below the full audio because it's an hour long, like I said, and this is just a sample. He provides further evidence on why this whole accusation is false. Problem is, I tried editing down to just the evidence and it was still 30 minutes. Oh, and before I move on, here's some of the rant he did about people going after his wife. It's a great time to do it. Let's get on this bandwagon because after all, her father just passed away less than a year ago and this weekend is Father's Day. So she'll be in a real good mood. And I'm we're, we sure said, you know, she can't travel coast to coast because of the pandemic. So she hadn't seen her mother who's had health issues and seen her since last year. So this would be a great family weekend that we can call her the fucking whore of Babylon on the Internet in the interest of stopping bullying and getting rid of these horrible people like her husband. May, hey, here's an idea. If we really jump on her hard enough, maybe she'll hurt herself. That would show him we could get even with Cornette if we made his wife hurt herself. At least we can make her run off and sit in the dark in the bedroom and cry for about three hours straight is why the fuck are all these people saying this shit about me on this weekend? That That's going to make Cornette miserable. That's what would happen there. I bet you we could really get even with that motherfucker. You fucking people are just as bad and disgusting and sick in the fucking head as the fucking shit you're trying to fix. And once again, I say you people, meaning not the people that are listening to this show, but the people that ought to be listening to it. That Hana Kimura... Everybody was all up in arms about all the way that she was talked about. I guarantee you the worst message that she got, Stacy got 500 of them worse and more of them. And there was a bunch of fucking people upset about, oh, how could they say these things and make this poor girl do that? They're the ones that turned around and do the same thing. If Stacy had killed herself, would it still be bad, Brian? Would it still be bad or would it be okay because I would get what I deserve? I'm just wondering, if, if, if she killed herself, it wouldn't count because a guy from Billings said that she was a horrible person too and that way we can get even with Cornette. Fuck you. Yeah, cancel culture doesn't work on Jim Cornette. The funny thing is... Jim Cornette is left-leaning and constantly bashes conservatives and Republicans. But he is the type of guy that if you accuse him of something, prepare to fight because he isn't going to go down quietly. His two podcasts are Jim Cornette's drive Through and The Jim Cornette Experience. He mostly shits on wrestling he hates and praises the things that he likes. He also hated Jimmy Havoc and Joey Ryan and others on this list. I am not going to give my opinion on if I believe any of these allegations. Instead, leaving it up to you. But this is just a list of the majority of those who are accused. I hope you at least understand why I chose not to go into full detail on this one. Also dongs. Too many dongs. Wrestlers, stop showing off your dongs. No more dongs. <laughs>